So this past weekend, we had races in wine country, Sonoma Raceway. We had an Arca West race, and then we had a fantastic Xfinity race with a dramatic finish. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think about the Xfinity race and the Arca West race we had in wine country? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. Alright, I'm going to quickly go through the Arca West race first because i know probably all of you just want to hear about the xfinity series race i do have time stamps so if you want to just go straight to that i understand but we did have an arca west race starting on the front row you had sam Mayer, xfinity series driver for junior motorsports who also did really well in the xfinity series race we'll get to that in a little bit plus on the front row you have william sawalich who actually won in portland just last week for the arca west series well, the early portions of this race, it looked like it was all Sam Mayer. Sam Mayer was pretty dominant of this race. Along with Sam Mayer, there was also Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson was also out there on the racetrack. And he, he got into some stuff, to say the least, during the race. And I think he finished like 15th or 16th at the end of it. Not necessarily a great finish for Noah, but he was running up in the top three or four for most of the race. Overall, a pretty uneventful race. We had... Similar stuff that we had at Portland, just a couple of drivers making mistakes. That's that's pretty much what we saw throughout the day. Nothing too crazy. Brent Cruz impressed the young racer. I don't know if a lot of you have heard about Brent Cruz, but he's an up-and-coming race car driver. Did pretty well in Sonoma. The finish didn't line up with where he was running throughout most of the day as he had a wheel fall off of his race car and roll down the racetrack. And he had, to, he had to come down pit road with only three tires on the car. But Sam Mayer ended up going on to winning the race. Great race from Mayer. The best car deserved to win. He was dominant all race long. And gets a win, a little confidence boost, a little bit of practice on the new repave. Heading into the Xfinity Series race the next day. Now let's move on to that Xfinity Series race. On pole, you had last week's winner, Shane Van Gisbergen, SVG. He was just so much quicker in practice and qualifying. It was pretty obvious that he was going to be the driver to beat on Saturday for the Xfinity Series. But a driver that wasn't all that far behind him was Ty Gibbs. And that's pretty much how that whole first stage went. I think they ended up driving out around to a 10-second lead, that being Shane Van Gisbergen and Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs was within a second of SVG the whole time while SVG was leading. And I, I, like I said, I think at the end of the stage, they were up by around 10 seconds on third place. Sam Mayer was probably that third best car throughout the day. You saw him get better throughout the day, but he made a bunch of mistakes, got into a lot of issues throughout the day, that being Sam Mayer. But it looked like through most of this event that it was going to be either Shane Van Gisbergen or Ty Gibbs winning this race up until later on in the event. Of course, you had drivers flipping the stages and stuff, but during one of the caution flags, it looked like maybe Ty Gibbs' pit crew had a little bit of a mistake on pit road. He lost a lot of positions. And then there was this train wreck of an accident you see on your screen. Just complete and utter chaos and mayhem. This is one of the biggest accidents I've seen at Sonoma Raceway. But then at the end of this incident... It looks like Ty Gibbs potentially could be fine. You also see his teammate Chandler Smith, not all that far from him, driving through the dirt. It looks like he also has maybe very slight damage, but damage that he could continue with. And then Ty Gibbs, I don't, I don't think he was trying to literally do donuts, but he was obviously really frustrated and just didn't care and was just real upset and just whipped it around, didn't care if there was anybody there. And ended up wrecking both of their race cars. I think Ty Gibbs ended up exiting the race. Chandler Smith ended up driving it back for a top 10 though. So that was really impressive. Because Chandler Smith, that front end was destroyed after what Ty Gibbs did to it. No, I didn't, I didn't like that though. I did not like Ty Gibbs doing that. That was 
that was completely unnecessary, especially since he doesn't even compete in this series full time. He just Ty Gibbs gets real competitive, and that's kind of what happened there. It looks like. So right before we get to those last couple of laps and the winning move, I gotta say this. I, I've said it before. I'm not the biggest fan of Austin Hill, but I was. I don't know how he keeps doing this races where he's not necessarily impressing. It's not like Austin Hill was having a bad day, but he had a top ten car and. Late in the race, when it comes to his driving and strategy, he ended up finding himself up at the front with a chance at a victory at Sonoma Raceway. It's really impressive that he's always able to find himself battling for the win or for a top five at the end of these races, even if he seems to be really struggling throughout the event. All right, let's get to the last restart of this event as we had Shane Van Gisbergen versus Austin Hill. You have to remember back at Circuit of the Americas, we had... A similar situation where neither of them ended up winning the event. We'll talk a little bit more about the connection to the finish at Circuit of the Americas in a little bit. But on the restart, coming up the hill to that right-hander, you had Shane Van Gisbergen get to the inside. And it looked like he might have just sensed it in a little too hard and hit it off of the curb. And at that point, he, he had to decide, was he going to hit the brakes and potentially cost him any shot at a victory or was he going to keep in the gas and go for the win and not necessarily cared what happened to Austin Hill and he chose the latter and it, it was a great move it's what needed to be done Shane was the dominant car of the day and if he wanted to win he, I feel like in that moment he might have needed to do that not necessarily saying that he wouldn't have caught him I think he would have caught him but I'm more worried about him getting run over in that sort of situation if he hits the brakes hard right there to make sure he doesn't hit austin hill the end of these races get really wild especially at road courses i would not be surprised if someone got in the back of him after that and he just goes around that's kind of how nascar is especially at the end of these races so you got to do what you got to do to get to victory lane and that is what shane did got to victory lane he had his celebration on the front stretch amazing donuts he really knows how to have that car control during these celebrations and then before that even he was burning it down through the s's and on the straightaways and had a little bit of a moment with austin hill uh it looked like, from what i heard uh i'm actually gonna i'm actually just gonna play this clip right here i'll just play the clip why, why do you want to be a good one well anyway so i was doing the skit at turn one because that's where all the fans are on the yeah, hill yeah. turn two and then he goes past pulling the finger so I'm like, this is Tell me number one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is for you now, not the fans. So yes. I just, I just followed him the whole lap. But, you know, I don't, you know, he knows what. That clip being from Stacking Pennies. Yeah, it looked like he was doing it for the fans. And and somebody got a really good, good photograph. I'm not going to show it on here. But you can look it up on Twitter of Austin Hill just flicking him off while he's doing his burnouts. Then at that point, Austin Hill is behind him. He's in front of him. He's on either side of him just burning it down just letting him have it that's like the biggest middle finger you could give to somebody right there which shane was doing shane got out of the car was pretty ecstatic always very happy especially after winning a race like he did he was by far the dominant car did his rugby ball celebration that he unveiled last week and ended up not making it into the stands made it over pit road but he wasn't able to get it over the fence to the fans on the inner portion of the racetrack got to get a little better at those punts but two in a row back to back for shane van gisbergen and before i get into more about shane versus austin hill do we consider him a championship threat at this point i'm not quite sure if i would go that far he has been improving pretty quickly on the on the ovals he's been improving pretty quickly on the ovals i've been pretty impressed with what he has been able to do at this point i expect him week in and week out to be running top 15 at pretty much every oval and with him getting back to back here i could see this as a pretty large confidence boost and maybe we can even see him up that oval performance just by a little bit and depending on what happens during the playoffs he ran actually really well at phoenix in the spring I just I don't know if I'm really able really able to fully commit to him being a legitimate championship threat, but he's he's right there. He's right there. He has a good shot. He's obviously going to make the playoffs. We got the Roval in the playoffs, so that could be a, 
a good opportunity for him to get out of, I think, the first round. But it's just something to keep our eye on to see if how quickly he can improve on these ovals because it sounds like there's a good chance he might be going cup racing next year. We'll have to see if he does go cup racing with track house and a third entry. Depends on how the whole charter and all, the, all that stuff goes. Now let's get back to Shane versus Austin Hill. And I told you I was going to bring back up Circuit of the Americas. Shane actually said this in his post-race press conference. They always have a little press conference with the winner and sometimes the crew chief and the team owner and the media center after the race. And he had to, he had to say this. I don't know. I hate racing and thinking like that, you know. But to me... You know, we're both taking a race win off each other now. It's um... And I think this could potentially be looked at in multiple different ways. I don't, I don't think he meant he did it intentionally. I don't think he did it intentionally. I just think at that point it was either he was like, it's either you or it's me, and I'm going to pick me every time. And that's what, that's what Shane said in that situation. I understand that. And he, he's right. If you look back at Circuit of the Americas, if you remember Circuit of the Americas you had going into turn one, Shane Van Gersbergen was by far the dominant car that day like he was in, this, in Sonoma. And going into turn one, Austin Hill had some track position, had a decent shot at the victory and just sent it into turn one and just pushed Shane all the way through the corner out of the groove and Shane ended up losing up losing a couple of spots. Shane had to drive Austin Hill back down and they ended up getting into it. Shane got in the back of Austin Hill, who both of them at that point probably weren't going to win anyway, even before that contact, because they had Kyle Larson charging on fresher tires. That contact propelled Kyle Larson to the victory at Circuit of the Americas, and neither Austin Hill or Shane ended up winning that event. And you could argue with that event, Austin Hill cost Shane Van Gisbergen the win. You can also argue the other way, that Shane cost Austin Hill the win, but that day, Shane Van Gisbergen definitely had the dominant race car of the event. I just think Austin Hill got a little overzealous, a little greedy at the end of the race. And I don't blame him. You're going for a victory. I probably would have done the exact same thing. And Shane got his payback. And they both ended up not getting the finish that they wanted at the end of Circuit of the Americas. And this is just the next chapter, I guess, in a potential rivalry between... Austin Hill and Shane Van Gisberg. And it seems pretty one-sided. Austin Hill seems pretty upset. And he's seen, he's he has seemed pretty upset through both instances. Shane seems like for the most part he is just having fun. But at the same time he gives what he gets. And that's how supercar drivers race. That's the etiquette over there. You you race how others race you. And no one really necessarily. There's, there's arguments in supercars as well. But it's not quite like it is over here in the states with nascar it's a little bit of a different driver's ethic i guess you could say but overall i'm all for it once again i the xfinity series race in my opinion was the best race of the weekend it was better than the cup series race it was way better than the arca west race i really enjoyed the xfinity series race it always tends to be the best race of the weekend now we head to iowa iowa is next on the schedule for the Xfinity Series and for ARCA. That should be a lot of fun, I'm hoping. I'm being very hopeful, to be honest. But Because if you look at one of my prior videos, I'll post it in the description. Iowa got a repave not all that long ago and was only able to apparently have time to repave half of the corners. This is a multi-groove racetrack at most points, and it's not going to be, it looks like, this weekend. But we'll have to see. I'm hopeful we'll get, we get some good racing at Iowa either way. Iowa back on the NASCAR schedule. First time on the Cup Series schedule. But I'm hoping they're able to have a good race. Because it sounds like they even sold out the Arca, Arca race there. The fans are coming out big for that event. And I hope it just all goes well for Iowa Speedway. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace. <laughs>